I don't know anything about using acrylic wash. I'm a little bit intimidated by it, to be honest. But I'm very curious. A lot of people seem to like it. And um, I didn't know where to start or how to invest because it is quite of an investment to purchase a set of Holbein paints because it's it's not cheap. When I saw this palette being launched, I was like, oh, these colors, these colors speak to me. So I thought it was a good way to try the medium. And if you don't know, acrylic wash is wash, but when it dries, it's not liftable anymore. And if you're not familiar with Rebecca Green, she does children's books as well as other things. I really like her style and I really like her color palettes. So uh, color selection curated by her um, is obviously going to be wonderful. Here is the little pamphlet that comes with the paints, also adorably illustrated, and um, some sample illustrations and the colors that she used to make them. And then these are samples of the color mixes that you can get with this palette. I have my trusty Strathmore Multimedia sketchbook, and we'll just get to swatching that and... Uh, see what we can do. Okay, I hope this framing is fine. I have a very precarious uh, tripod situation <laughs> set up right now. Um, of course, my tripod decided to conk out on me, like, just now, so I'm gonna have to figure that out. But for now, it's tied up with yarn to my desk, and we're just gonna hope Hope it all works out. So let's take a look at what we got here. So um, the first color is vermilion. I actually watched um, a Rebecca Green uh, video yesterday. I subscribed to her newsletter, but I didn't know she had a YouTube channel. This one is called Coral Red. This is totally up my alley. The vermilion is too, but this kind of like a corally salmon color is just like one of the colors I just love. Oh, it really does look like mustard. Hmm. That's interesting. I really haven't explored what colors like these kind of greens can do. Ooh, too much water there. So far, these are all very creamy and very opaque. My goodness, I had a cup of coffee, and my my body's feeling it. I haven't been drinking coffee lately, so. Okay, well, I watered that one down way too much. Okay, that would be very useful. I mean, you could mix a color like this with a blue and a white. This is a nice color, though. The one thing I did notice with my um, regular Holbein gouache that I purchased. I only purchased three colors and the white um, is that a little goes a really long way. Now, even though the um, Rebecca Green set is not available, you can buy these colors individually. That's the kind of color that's up my alley for sure. And this is why I got this set, or I asked for it for Christmas because it just looked like something that I would use all the colors of, you know? Like, sometimes you get a set and there's not a lot of colors in there that you're drawn to. But this seemed to have, like, I mean, so far I like all of them. And they're colors that will play well together. Okay, so I watered that down a little bit too much. But you can see it's very, very opaque. Oh, that's really nice. It's weird that the colors that, um you'll get excited about, you know, you think it'd be like really bright colors and, um, I don't know, more wild colors, but sometimes it's like, oh, that's a good burnt sienna, you know? Let's see what this burnt sienna is now. like. Because like burnt sienna is like a very typical color that you'll find in almost every, every palette out there, but they can be tinged more red or they can be deeper. Burnt sienna is a very, very useful uh, color 
for mixing. It's very versatile, actually. Like, I mean, the classic thing is to have a burnt sienna and a ultramarine blue for grays and things, but you can use this kind of in the same way you would a red. Now, sepia is a color that I always love. It's a way to get dark without going black, and it has more more to it, you know? I don't know if it seems boring to people, but like, if you use it, you will know sepia is where it's at. It's just like the perfect dark. I like that a lot. And I didn't realize there was a gold. So that's cool. Now, unfortunately, if you're using gouache for reproduction art, you know, like prints or something like that, the gold is not gonna really show up, you know? But it does give you like a yellow ochre-y thing with some, some transparent quality to it. And if you're selling originals, then uh, that's something that you might want to use. Anyways, I'm curious. That's cool. Here we have them. First is vermilion, coral red, mustard, emerald green, sap green, pale aqua, smalt blue, ash yellow I believe? Yep. Ash blue, burnt sienna, sepia, and gold. So, load up my palette here. <laughs> I'm just wondering on what's the best way to do this because it's acrylic gouache and that means it, it'll dry. So I don't want to put too much paint out because you can't reactivate it. This was my hesitation with purchasing acrylic gouache because I was like, I don't know if I'm going to like the way you use it, you know? Like, I like the way it looks, but doesn't mean that I'm going to enjoy the the method <laughs> if you know what i mean so i'm just so used to like regular gouache but i can i can um appreciate how this might be handy especially like if you're gonna do an illustration that has um, a complicated background. You could do that in acrylic gouache and then put the foreground in with either acrylic gouache or um, regular gouache and you don't have to worry about disturbing the image behind, which uh, does sound appealing to me. I'm just putting a little bit <laughs> because I'm just going to try some mixes and also I'm not sure how practical this combination is because I've never used this before. So I'm not sure if like this will uh, stay the palette for this media or if I'm going to find that it's not very practical. So I'm just being cautious. Also a little goes a long way. Once I do some mixes and I decide... Um, the colors that I want to use, then I'll probably put down a bit more more paint of, of those particular colors. Okay, let's try this. I don't, I don't know. Oh, see, I like that. It's like a... It's paled out. Oh, that's nice. It's like, you know... It could be a skin tone. I learned to use gouache as, um, in its, like, thick form, you know, as an opaque medium, like, in a graphic way, but you don't have to, you know? And it's funny, like, how you learn things and then you just think it's a rule and, uh, and then you don't try something else and it's like, well, it, it doesn't have to look like that. It can look like this. You can use it like watercolor. I think that the best way to like explore paint colors that you own or have is to pick three or four, do some color mixes with them, and then do like an illustration or 
a little painting with them and then maybe pick three or four other colors and maybe maybe you like liked two of the colors in combination but one of them didn't really find you didn't find useful you know and you swap it out for something else and then like that way like through process of elimination and also in a more controlled way you'll you'll get to know how your colors work because it's tempting to like use all of this <laughs> and maybe sometimes you would but a lot of the times that's too much a lot of the times that's like how you get muddy colors if you look at master paintings most of them are done in a very limited palette and i think most successful art has a limited palette Okay, I'm gonna say the one like odd thing that I find about this palette is that there's only one yellow and maybe that's just a personal a personal thing. I think I, I mix with yellows a lot or I'm just used to the colors that I use, you know? Like I always have a warm yellow, obviously, <laughs> and kind of like an orange yellow, a green yellow, an ochre. <laughs> And uh, in the last few years, I just really love um, like a raw sienna, which is sort of um, an ochre earth tone thing. Now that is really nice. This guy here. And this guy here. And the yellow. I mean, this is a good n neutral yellow, so you could pretty much mix everything with it but you know I'm just a yellow fiend okay so this is more like an ochre it's called ash yellow so maybe I'm just like not seeing how this would work no my tendency is to mix it with this I'll just do it okay so you get like a more mm, okay kind of like it kind of me the thing that's like really cool about gouache is that you can get such precise color. I think like with watercolor, it's not the same. Tell me if you agree or not, but I feel like with gouache you can like really um, pinpoint a temperature and a, and a vibrancy or maybe it's just more apparent because the, the color lays flat I don't know gouache is really good for um, understanding color like as a tool that's a good gray I think it, because it's winter I'm just like I'm drawn to this thing right now like I'm just thinking of like a snow scene and I'm just like what is the range of this blue <laughs> I just don't know if that's like a boring color to most people but it's not to me <laughs> okay so what I will say is that you need white maybe you know you might want a white in addition I don't know there's something to me about the yellow greens that um are mysterious and science fictiony and I just like them a lot. What will your palette look like if you use acrylic gouache? Is it just like when you have an acrylic palette it just gets messier and messier? Because like unless you peel the paint off it's just loading paint and paint and paint. Okay I like this a lot. There's I don't know if you can tell but there's a bit of a, a granulation happening which I think is because of that blue. Okay I'm gonna just continue swatching and figuring this out and then I'll give you some of my feedback afterwards. Okay so I did a bit more swatching and I just wanted to see what you could get as far as brighter colors because a lot of the initial mixes that I made were more subdued which I think um, is really nice and I like and obviously um, it's something that the artist that uh, curated this palette also likes but I just wanted to see like how bright you could go and you can get some pretty nice nice brights here I was like confused a little bit initially with the mixing because I wasn't getting some of the colors I expected to get 
but then looking at the pigment on the back of the tubes, and if you're not sure where to find that, at the back of every paint tube, you'll have a pigment section and it'll tell you what pigments are used. So PB pigment blue, and the pigment is pigment blue 29, and then PW is pigment white, and the pigment is number six. So. Um, just because of my habit, like the way I use things, I usually have dark blue, which is an indigo, and a dark brown, which is a sepia, and they're both transparent. And so, um, looking at the backs of all of these blues, they are all, uh, mixed with white. So you're never going to quite go as dark as I expect it to go, because you always have that white pigment. Like that helps with opacity and that can be a benefit. And I mean, this is pretty dark, you know, so like I, you might not, not need to go darker than that. I guess like I was looking for a bit more hue, you know, so a bit more um, blue in there, but um, that's quite nice and quite dark enough probably. But that's just something to mention in the set and also when you're purchasing paints in general. Like, uh, sometimes in gouache particularly, there'll be a white pigment in there. And if you're not getting the mixes that you expect to be getting, check that there's not white in there. So, about I, after looking through the set, about half of the colors have a white pigment mixed in. So that's something to keep in mind as far as um, how things may play together. But um, I think there's a... a beautiful range of colors here and lots of things that you can do. I was happy to get like these kind of mustardy yellows I really like. I like these kind of greens and I mean, I mean there was a reason I wanted this palette. It speaks to me. But another thing that I was happily surprised with, I just assumed that the gold would be used in a way that you would um, sort of like layer over another color or something like that, you know? And I'm like, it probably doesn't mix well with the pigments. And uh, I was happily surprised to see that you could actually um, mix the gold in with other colors and get an iridescent version of, of those color mixes, which is actually super cool and something unexpected. So that's something I'd like to play around with a little bit more. And yeah, I never realized there was a gold in this palette. I just thought that like looking at the color, I thought it was a yellow ochre. And you can use it very much like yellow ochre with the added benefit of sparkles, which is cool. I, I really uh, like this palette and um, you can try to hunt it down, but I don't think uh, you'll find it anymore. However, if there are any colors that you like in here, you can find them individually and just purchase them individually. So, this video ended up being longer than I expected, so I'm going to put my little illustration um, that I'm going to do with this palette in a separate video. So I hope you join me for that, and I'll be seeing you soon.